Great, and it's glad that you, uh, well, I'm glad you also mentioned neighbourhood policing, uh, because last night I was at the Cannons Park Residents Association uh, meeting where the main topic of discussion was safer neighbourhood teams and local policing and crime. Uh, and one thing that, that I gathered from uh, all of the uh, local groups that I meet is how important they value their local safer neighbourhood teams. Uh, so have you, so you've spoken already about wanting to strengthen our neighbourhood policing settlement. Can you describe what that means to you? So there are lots of aspects to that. Um, start with the resourcing um, aspect. Between, I mean, town centre teams are doing a sort of, sort of intense neighbour policing in certain areas. Between town centre teams and the officers on wards, we have a sort of, I think, slightly larger number of officers on wards and neighbour policing than we would have had sort of a decade or so ago. Um, but in terms of PCSOs, we're about 1,600 lighter. If we were to have a comparable number to what we had that time, about 1,600 PCSOs, and both the Mayor and I are very enthusiastic about their contribution, and it's one of the things we're looking at in our sort of in our budget conversations about whether we could whether we could um, rebuild those rebuild those numbers. Um, I also think it's about the strength of local leadership at a borough level, which picks up the um, uh, uh, points made by um, Susan Hall earlier on. Um, and then there's other aspects in terms of schools and preventative work. And then behind that, of course, thinking about how do we measure their effect, how do we connect them better to communities, both physically and electronically, uh, and, um, and then some of the specialist areas around schools and preventative tools. So there's a, there's a range of things to look at that add together to um, effective neighbourhood policing.